Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that Egyptian God card surprise subscribe button as we climb even further beyond the 1100 ladder. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you're having a fantastic day. Thank you so much for all the love and support. As always, I never thought I would see the day in 2023 an Egyptian God card deck, specifically the Winged Dragon of Ra, is actually doing well in the OCG. Now, before you start saying the OCG has nothing to do with the TCG here, they do have Max C. So instead of Max C, I am using Droll and Lockbird. The picture that I saw on M. Cole 40's channel did not have a side deck, and also there was a bit of glare, and by a bit, I mean a lot of fucking glare. So even though I didn't see Monsterborn pictured, I did see Dark Spell Regeneration pictured, and you need Monsterborn for that shit to work. Same goes for Millennium Revelation. So Obviously, the person should be playing Monster Born. There was also a fourth card with these other three traps. I don't know what it was because there was a big-ass glare on it. So I'm just going to hope that Monster Born is correct and that this is the correct deck list. But besides the point, there are several different ways to go about building this deck in the OCG. I wanted to show this one off because, yes, even though it was in an OCG locals, it did go undefeated. And I believe that there could be some merit for this down the line potentially depending on what we may get on you know our new upcoming ban list that we should be getting sometime this month in may or even just as a concept that you can use for locals and do decent with um yeah i mean it's on top of that it's the egyptian gods like who would have thought that the egyptian god cards would actually be able to do something like and, and I know some people are going to be like, well, Avery, it's not a true Egyptian god deck because you're running Numerons with it. It should just be all the Egyptian gods, blah, blah, blah. Bro, if you want to actually like have some semblance of a functioning deck using an Egyptian god card, whether it's one or multiple, you got to splash it in with another fucking engine. Like you're not going to be able to play a straight 40 card deck using the Egyptian god cards and expect to do well. Like your ass is just going to get smacked around. So I'm sorry that we're using a Numeron engine, but like, Bro, this dumps out four monsters. You can't tell me that this shit's not good, especially in a going second deck like this. So, I'm sorry if that ruffles some jimmies. Maybe go test some grass. I don't know, but it's it's also like a really cool deck. Like, this isn't going to break the bank. It's probably not going to beat meta like 95% of the time. Hopefully it can, but if it doesn't, at least it's a really cool ass deck that you can play. And like, again, with the people that want to get mad about it not being a real Egyptian God card deck, at least that this isn't just like, oh, I'm playing one copy of Wing Dragon of Raw in my purely deck. It's suddenly an Egyptian God card deck. No, that's not what we're doing here, Sugar Boo Bear. So relax your anus, relax your ultra balls and your ultra bananas as we dive on into this deck profile. So we are playing two copies of the Wing Dragon Raw, two copies of its big ass testicle sphere mode, and then one copy of the Immortal Phoenix. So sphere mode, you all know what this big old chicken nuggy does. Tribute it to bring out Raw. If Raw is sent to grave, you can get out the Immortal Phoenix. Um, pretty straightforward stuff, and the fact, too, that Immortal Phoenix is just unaffected by anything and has 4,000 attacks seems pretty good. We're playing uh, three copies of Guardian Slime, so if you take battle or effect damage, you can stress some this card from your hand. During damage calc, if this card battles an opponent's monster on a quick effect, you can make this card gain defense equal to that opponent's monster's attack during that damage calculation only. So its defense becomes equal to the monster's attack. If this card is sent from the hand or field to the grave, you can have one spell or trap from your deck to your hand that specifically lists raw in its text. You can only use each effect once per turn. So it can search you any of these Egyptian god pieces like this. Search you this, this. Um, it can't search you this, unfortunately. Uh, it can search this, search this, uh, search this. It, it searches you a lot of stuff, ladies and gentlemen. We're also playing three copies of the Reactor Slime. So during your main phase, you can activate this effect to special summon two slime tokens. Also, you can't normally special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except Divine Beast monsters. And then during the battle phase, quick effect, you can tribute this card to set a metal reflect slime from your hand deck or grave. And it can be activated this turn. So you can set the slime, activate slime, and all of a sudden you got your God Slime. And honestly, God Slime, just on its own, is a really good card, ladies and gentlemen. Like 3,000 attack and defense. And on top of that, uh, let me see here. You, uh, it could be used as one or three tributes. We already knew that. Uh, that that's pretty obvious with this card. It's just like the anime. And it can't be destroyed in battle, and your opponent's monsters cannot target for attacks, and your opponent cannot target but card effects any monster you control except God Slime. Seems pretty good. We're playing three Ash. The Drolls should be Max C. I want to make this TCG legal, so these could be Drolls. These could be Ghost Ogres. These could be Lightning Storms. These could be anything you really want. Uh, and then we're playing two copies of Numeron Calling, three copies of Ancient Chant. It's basically a Rota for Raw. Uh, one Monster Reborn, two Blaze Cannon, which is 
really good. It gives Raw more of its like anime-esque effects, and it, the activation and effect can't be negated, so it's definitely going to go through. Two copies of Soul Crossing, because this card's disgusting. It's a soul exchange on crack. We've got three copies of the True Sun God. So when this is activated, you add Raw or one card that mentions it from your deck to your hand, except the True Sun God, so except itself. Monsters except Raw cannot attack the turn of their special summon. Once per turn during your main phase, you can send this card from the field or one Immortal Phoenix from your deck to the grave, then send one the Winged Dragon of Raw from your monster zone to the grave, and you can only have it one True Sun God per turn. Now you're probably wondering, Avery, why would you want to do that? Well, if your Raw can't get game, you can use True Sun God to send the Raw to the grave, dump the phoenix from deck to grave and now you can use phoenix to summon itself out and it has 4,000 attack so for whatever reason you cheese out the winged dragon of raw and you don't want to pay all of your life points except 100 to have it gain attack like either because you just didn't normal summon it or whatever then you can just use true sun god to dump out immortal phoenix and then you can kind of get your gravy train going because once immortal phoenix leaves the field you can get out sphere mode then sphere mode contribute itself to raw then once raw goes to the grave you can get immortal phoenix so you just keep it going every turn we're playing two copies of Millennium Revelation. This fucking searches you monster reborn. I think that's hilarious. Two copies of Mount of the Bound Creator, because it's actually pretty good in a Winged Dragon of Raw deck. Three copies of Numeron Network to dump the calling. One Metal Reflect Slime. One uh, Sun God Unification. And then one Dark Spell Regeneration. So, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, <clears throat> you target a spell in your opponent's grave. You set it to your field. Seems pretty good. You can banish this card from your grave and send one monster reborn from your hand or set on your field to the grave. Special summon one the winged dragon of raw from your grave, ignoring summoning conditions. Then you can send one monster your opponent controls to the graveyard. Also send that special summon monster to the graveyard in the end phase. So you know what that means. You send out raw, you get out immortal phoenix, and you just keep it going. Uh, then we're playing the three god slime. Really good. Uh, one juggernaut, or not juggernaut, leave. Uh, one super Dora. One Gustav Max, two of each of the uh, Numeron monsters, so two three, two twos, two ones, and two fours, and then two copies of the Mega Clocks. There was no side deck pictured, so I cannot speak on the side deck. Uh, keep in mind, again, that this is in the OCG, so the way that they side deck is a bit different because they do have Max C to contend with on over there. And that is something that I do want to mention near the end of this deck profile, is that because of the fact that Max C is a thing in the OCG and combo decks can't really thrive all that well there, at least to a degree... That could be the reason why this Winged Dragon of Raw, Egyptian God deck, whatever it is you want to call it, is doing decent over there. However, as a concept, I feel like that this is still worth talking about, even on a competitive level. You know, you might be a competitive player like your boy, and you may be thinking, please, Winged Dragon of Raw, that ain't going to do shit here. Like, this is garbage. You know, you can think what you want, but if it is doing well in the OCG, I feel like it's at least worth talking about. Even if it's just something played at your locals and it's something that you, you know, need to know exists, then, well, you need to know that it exists. And especially if you're a casual player and, like, you don't really want to be going to a locals, like, you're afraid you're going to get smacked around, you could maybe play something like this or to some degree of this and maybe even see some success. Now, are, are you going to, like, top a regional or win a fucking YCS with this? Fuck no. No, you are not. Sorry, Sugar Boo Bear, but that's not how this game works. If you're playing Winged Dragon of Raw, uh, yeah, unless you play in 2013 Dragon Ruler format where Obelisk the Tormentor was played for like five minutes, you ain't going to stand a chance. But as something that is both fun and, according to the OCG, can actually be kind of competitive, I think that this is absolutely fantastic to see. We are finally seeing the Egyptian God cards do something, and it's great. It doesn't really surprise me that it's the Winged Dragon of Raw because... Raw has gotten the most amount of support of any of the Egyptian gods. I'm surprised, though, that um, maybe some Slifers weren't put in the mix here. Because remember, Slifer does have that trap card, uh, the Revived Sky God, that has the anime effect of a card of sanctity to let you draw until you have six cards in your hand. That still seems really disgusting to me. But guys, let me know what you think about this deck down in the comments below. Could we see something like this happen in the TCG? I'd be interested to know what you have to think. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.